Hey guys, what's going on? It's Sean of Third Relified. I hope you're having a beautiful day today. I have a little bit of a guest with me. Here he is. Look at him. This is my littlest boy, Griffin. He's down here helping me. It's a very complex story that we are doing today, and I obviously need his assistance and the nuance and, you know, all, all of all of that, uh, all that stuff. So for his sake, I need you to like, subscribe, share, help me grow the channel because um, anything I get out of this channel actually goes to him. So maybe, maybe do that. Also, thirdrelify.locals.com is the best way to support me. Again, um, anything that uh, you're, you're generous enough to, to give, Helps this grow, and once this grows, this takes care of him. I mean, he's a, he's a good looking lad, eh? He's doing shapes right now. That's, that's what he's doing. So, this story that a lot of people are talking about, like it's the end of the world, and it's just not, is this conservative influence duped into working for Russia as a media company indicted for sprawling one or so ten million dollar covert project. It it's kind of dumb. I mean when when you listen to the leftists or the leftist media or anybody who doesn't really know people with Russia derangement syndrome, when you listen to these people, it's like the end of democracy. But isn't that always the case? Isn't it always the end of democracy? And apparently, following the actual constitution is the end of democracy. Like they say, like following or the constitution, it might be America's founding document, but it's dangerous. Like these people are psychotic, and these are the people who think this story. So, in a nutshell, if you only have a uh, a moment in a nutshell russia today or maybe maybe they just go by rt but rt means russia today it's um it's uh it's the news it it it's just the news but from a russian perspective kind of like the i don't know the british broadcasting corporation the bbc or the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, the CBC, or like, I don't know, ABC, the Australian Broadcasting Corporation. Oh, I don't know. What about um, CNN, NBC, ABC, MSNBC, like, you know, the American propaganda networks? Or what about Al Jazeera? Like, I mean, there's all kinds of places that have governmental mouthpieces. So it's, it's, I don't know, staggering to me that, you know, they're like, oh my God, Russia today, propaganda. Well, yeah, why are you mad about something? Like, it's like, oh, what's this? The water is wet and the sky is blue. I think Griffin totally agrees with what I'm saying right now. And so, the long and the short of what had happened is there is a conservative uh, uh, social media individual, Lauren Chen. Smoke show of a woman, but that's besides the point. She is very well-traveled. I think she's um, Chinese, but from Hong Kong. Um, grew up in Canada and, and very well-traveled around the world. And her and her husband started Tenant Media out of Tennessee. And there was an investor, an, inv an investor who put $10 million into Tenant Media. Companies are allowed to get investment. So I don't know why this is a problem. It is a little sketchy, I will say, that this, this um, investor, this the dude, didn't exist. He went by. He went, oh no, the camera. Oh, he's got 
He's got the camera. Oh no. <laughs> uh, this is not how news is done. <laughs> got. <laughs> That's not how news is done. No, don't eat that. Dude, we're doing we're doing news. We're we're doing the news. No Stop it. Stop it. Good lord, sir. We're doing the news. So the investor that invested the ten million dollars to Lauren Chen uh, didn't exist. It was like a, a fake name. Okay, I guess I guess there's all kinds of investors that that are anonymous or whatever, right? And then Tenant Media gets Tim Pool, Benny Johnson, uh, Dave Rubin, and a, a, a bunch of other people to to contract with them. They make content, the same content that they've always made, that they'll continue to make. And they did it for Tenant Media. They just stuck that name on it. And everyone was like, hey, this Tenant Media is kind of cool. I mean, if you liked Lauren Southern beforehand, you'll like her afterwards. Or if you liked Benny Johnson beforehand, you, you like him afterwards. Like, they didn't change anything that they were doing. And so this, this whole thing is kind of suspicious, really. Conservative influencers were allegedly duped because, right, duped because Tim Pool or Dave Rubin or whoever, they, they, weren't, in, they weren't told. Oh, yeah, by the way, Russia Today um, is uh, a backing tenant media. They, they've invested money into it. Okay, so what? They weren't told that. They don't need to be told that. So we're allegedly duped into working with Russian assets as they raked in hundreds of thousands of dollars for their videos under a sprawling 10 million covert project by Kremlin-backed RT, federal officials said Wednesday. The bombshell indictment unsealed into the Southern District of New York. Now, I don't trust a lot of things that go into the Southern District of New York because that is the most left, most corrupt district that any case can be brought against. It's the corrupt one. It's the shit one. It's the, it's the one that's like, oh yeah, Trump, totally guilty of not crimes. Totally guilty. So it accuses an RT, empl um, RT employees, Konstantin Kalishnikov and Alina of Afanasyeva of implementing a plan to shell out nearly $10 million to a Tennessee-based company turnout videos consistent with the Kremlin's interest in amplifying U.S. domestic division. So, what what does what does that even mean? So, the Tennessee-based company is Tenant Media. Um, videos consistent. So, just what giving giving money to a right-wing company so it can make right-wing videos. I mean, they they didn't say, "Oh, Rush is the best." Russia's the best. Just a day or so ago, Lauren Chen accused Russia of doing horrendous crimes against humanity in the Second World War. Like, what is it that she's she's doing? She she took investment money. Though the indictment does not name the Tennessee-based media company, its details match up exactly with Tenant Media, which employs well-known conservative personalities like Dave Rubin, Benny Johnson. And Tim Pool. Its president is Liam Donovan, who is the husband of Lauren Chen, a Canadian influencer who is listed as a contributor of several opinion articles for RT from 2021 and 2022. I don't see any problem with that. She, she's allowed to do work for other media companies. Like I, I don't know why this is, uh, this is a thing. You're allowed to like Russia. You're allowed to hate Russia. You're allowed to have whatever opinion you want. Like, she's not doing anything illegal or, or even nefarious. Griffin, Griffin agrees with me right now. Like, you're allowed to have these opinions. You're allowed to think that Ukraine is the greatest thing ever. Or you're allowed to think that maybe, just maybe, they're going to lose. Your news is allowed to be slanted. I mean, I, I think news it should be obvious which way it's slanted. Like To me, the worst news is the kind that, that's trying to sell you something, but you don't know what it is that you're buying, right? 
If you're getting your news from Russia today, you should likely have an idea that maybe it's a Russian-centric, Russian-focused kind of point of view. Even, even the Daily Mail itself. Here's an article. Rattled Putin admits Russia is ready for peace talks with Kiev as Ukraine continues its blistering offensive in Kursk. To you, if you if you're not following what's going on, I follow the what's going on in um, Ukraine so closely. You might think this article is telling you that Ukraine storming a bunch of small little towns, capturing a bunch of empty open farmland, has rattled Putin. Putin is like, oh my God, what am I gonna do? Oh, we better negotiate. Ukraine's offensive into Kursk was a strategic folly, a terrible mistake that is now backfiring. It may have actually been a trap set up by Russia. That area was completely mined. Russia removed the mines and then they left. Everyone was like, oh my goodness, they've removed all the mines. That must mean they're going to come through this way into Ukraine and open up a new front. But they just didn't. So people were like, well, this is really silly. This is inviting Ukraine in. Yeah, it did. It invited them in. And they, they, Russia opened the door and Ukraine walked through it. Was it a trap? I don't know. The whole thing is weird. But yeah, so Ukraine goes in, blasts in, 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 into, into Kursk, takes a handful of small towns, a bunch of open fields, gets spread out really, really thin, loses its connection to the supply lines, tries to get the nuclear power plant, fails spectacularly, and now they're just sitting there like ducks. The second hope was that busting into Russia, into the Kursk area, was going to force Russia to pull troops from the Donbass into, into this. But Russia has so many troops in reserve waiting, they just used those instead. And so then Ukraine was like, ah, shit! So then Ukraine pulled troops from the Donbass, the exact thing that they shouldn't have done, but they don't have any troops. And so now Russia is just steamrolling the Donbass. Vugladar is going to fall any moment. And that's like a massive strategic fortified town. Once Ukraine loses that, you know, there's literally zero hope. But you wouldn't know any of that from this headline. Putin's not rattled. He was just in Mongolia. Mongolia signed the the um the, the Roman agreement or the Roman concord or the Roman statute or whatever it's called, where if you if you're a part of this this treaty, you have to arrest countries or sorry, you have to arrest the leaders if there's an ICC criminal warrant. ICC has put a warrant out for Putin. Putin went to Mongolia. Mongolia was like, hey, listen, International Criminal Court. Uh, yeah, Putin's our boy. We're not following your warrant. He's not rattled. He's walking in places and it's just fine. Rick's is becoming bigger and better than ever. So if you read this headline, you, you would get an idea that's completely, completely incorrect. This is propaganda. Why is this propaganda okay from the Daily Mail? That's UK. But something that maybe Lauren Chen did on Russia Today is, is, is just the worst thing ever. Or Tim Poole doing the same the same thing that he always does. The same media, the same content, the same content that Dave Rubin and Benny Johnson did. That's all of a sudden really suspicious. But so, and carrying on with this. But the conservative media darlings were unaware of the scheme. It's not even a scheme. It's, just, it's literally just a, an investment into a company. But, um, unaware of the scheme, and at least two of them were provided false information about the source of the company's funding. And, you know, that's not cool. That's not cool. Maybe they would have said, if, if Lauren was like, hey, listen, our backers are is Russia today. Maybe Tim Pool would have been like, you know what? I don't really want to work for a company whose investment comes from Russia today. Like, I just, I don't like that. And maybe they would have lost that on talent. It would have been a little more honest, and that's the best policy. But this big conspiracy criminal thing, you know, the, the you know, cloak and dagger spy gate shit that this is, it's not that. 
This, to me, this is Russia hoax 3.0. Russia, Russia, Russia. Electric boogaloo, a -a -a or something. The company never disclosed to the influencers or to their millions of followers that its ties to Russia Today and the Russian government, and it and its ties to the Russian government via RT. Attorney General Merrick Garland, who is a leftist and is looking for a reason to say that this election was rigged. Ultimately, this whole thing comes down to that. Why is it happening right now? So, the, because when Donald Trump wins, the left is going to say, it was rigged, it was rigged, it was rigged, it was rigged, it was Russia, Russia, Russia. They're, they're preemptively making the excuse because if for some reason the, uh, the shadow campaign is successful and D Donald Trump does not win, all of this will go away in a fucking poof. We will then go, hey, no, this was rigged, this was rigged, this was rigged because of Russia. Don't you remember? You, you, you were saying that Russia was going to do something. Then YouTube would step in and say, actually, no, you can't talk about that. Your channel is banned. So Merrick Garland said the, uh, he announced the charges against the RT employees for conspiracy to commit money laundering and violating the Foreign Agents Registration Act, which is funny because in the country of Georgia, um, the tiny little formerly Russian country of Georgia, but, you know, uh, they wanted to put in a Foreign Agents Registration Act and um, you know what happened? There was all of these protests that made no sense. Massive protests protesting their version of the FARA Act. And it was, um, it was American interference. It was like the EU and the UN and America were, were like getting all the protesters and, 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 and paying for it. So America could influence the country of Georgia. But heaven fucking forbid RT invests in tenant media. So instead, the uh, defendants and the company claimed that the company was sponsored by a private investor, but that private investor was a, fi it was a fake person. They were told that the company was sponsored by a private investor named Edward Gregorian, whom the de defendants described as an accomplished financial professional who held positions at a multinational bank in Brussels and France. In their, own in their own online communications, however, the, the, the founders of the company allegedly referred to their backers as the Russians. So, Kalishnikosh and, um, and Fenyazyeva are at large, and it was not immediately clear if they had lawyers who could speak on their behalf. Daily Mail has reached out to Tenet Media and Russia Today for comment, but in a response to a request for comment from NBC News, a spokesperson for RT wrote, Ha 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 ha. <laughs> and we got to earn our Kremlin paychecks somehow. That is hilarious. The indictment claims the conservative voices were ranking, raking in large sums of money from the Russian duo. So what? So what? Like, I, I want to I wanna point out for a minute because there's all, you know, the, it's about, oh, the influence, the influence, the influence. Fox, we all know Fox, the, the conservative media giant that's actually not very conservative at all. Anyways, they lost, they are, they, 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 um, lost a, a lawsuit or settled a lawsuit with uh, Dominion for like $800 million or whatever, right? Um, well, they, they took a billion dollars for China. They, they borrowed or took investments or whatever from, from China. For a billion dollars. What do you think China wants in return for their billion dollars? Are we, why aren't we screaming about that? Is it because it's Fox, CNN, MS, NBC, ABC, NBC, whatever, go on, whatever, whatever. They all, yeah, and Fox all took hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars from Big Pharma to do nothing but push pharmaceutical, uh, uh, untested uh, medicines and they, they 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 took so much money that it even changed their coverage and opinions they couldn't have open honest opinions of it so the news coverage was actually deeply and heavily influenced by the big pharma money are we are we not going to talk about that but 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 somehow but somehow 10 million dollars investment from RT is like the worst thing ever. 
Now, I'm not, I'm also not a very big, oh, it's the Jews. I'm, I'm not a big one of those guys. I mean, I can tell you the Israeli government is shit, but I mean, most governments are shit. Do I hate Jews? Some of them because they're just bad people, not because they wear tiny hats or anything like that. But, you know, some people will say that uh, the Israeli government puts an awful lot of money into an awful lot of companies. The Daily Wire may or may not be one of them. The ADL and, and whatever. Like, they do an awful lot of influencing, but we're worried about Russia's $10 million. In the last Canadian election, China actually rigged it. And it's just talked about in hush whispers. So it is said that uh, a whopping 8.7 million was sent to the production companies of Commentator 1, Commentator 2, and Commentator 3 alone. We don't know who those are. Commentator 1 is now believed to be Dave Rubin. While Commentator 2 is likely Tim Poole, it is unclear from the description in the indictment who Commentator 3 may be. I mean, it could be Benny Johnson. It could be um, Lauren Southern. An exchange cited in the indictment also claims that commentator 2, Dave Rubin, said the contract would need to be closer to $5 million a year for him to be interested. While commentator number 2, Tim Poole, uh, would take $100,000 per weekly episode to make it worth his while. So Tim Poole on Friday mornings does the Culture War podcast, right? So he stopped doing his four or five videos. What is 10 a.m., 1 a.m., 4 p.m., 6 videos or whatever. So he basically, Tim Poole said, hey, listen, if, if I'm going to if I'm going to do this, this Friday thing for you and, and not record my videos on Friday, you're, you're going to pay me for that a, a effective lost income. Now, he he no during the week, Tim Poole will make an extra segment and then. Basically, those extra segments will come out on Friday. So he still gets the income, but you can tell sometimes the news stories are like a week old and you're like, what the fuck, man? I don't even care about this. But yeah, so $100,000 basically a week. One of Tenet's founders allegedly said the $100,000 fee would be very hard for the company to recoup the costs based on ad revenue from web traffic or sponsors alone, but they decided to move forward with the agreement anyway, NBC reports. Another unidentified influencer's contract, meanwhile, reportedly included a 400000 monthly fee, a $100,000 signing bonus, and an additional performance bonus. Now, I am not a Putin puppet. I don't particularly like Russia. I don't hate them. I'm not, not against them. I'm very much a realist. Griffin, on the other hand, does like Russia. Yeah. Um, but if if I was getting a four hundred thousand dollar monthly monthly fee, a hundred thousand dollar signing bonus, and an additional performance fee, I'd be a button uh, a Putin puppet. I would, oh my god, I would dance and I would just do all this. I would do anything for that kind of money. Anyways, eventually payments from the Russians have allegedly made up 90% deposits made to the company's yeah. accounts. So they were the big, heavy investor. As the money was pouring in, the indictment claims the Russian backers pushed tenants, U.S. commentators to share Russian-funded content with their larger audience. I don't even see anything wrong with this. They even openly worried about how few of their raw videos were being posted by certain of the company's talent, the indictment says. Still, Tenet became a home for staunch pro-Trump voices, with many of its commentators interviewing the former president and his family while railing against U.S. funding for Ukraine and downplaying the events of J6. Well, J6 was a setup, literally a setup of Nancy Pelosi and then a, a witch hunt afterwards. It was basically a riot that ended up into a misguided tour. So that, that's, a, that's a thing. But also, the U.S. should not be funding Ukraine. Canada, Australia, England, France, Germany. They have all gone down the pisser giving, giving every last little bit of money and equipment and whatever to Ukraine. Ukraine has squandered it. So yes, U.S. funding should not go to Ukraine.
And I want to point out that uh, having Trump in office, that's bad for Putin. Putin doesn't walk all over Trump. Vladimir Putin has actually said, I want Kamala Harris in office. I hope she wins. Like he said, I want her to win. So, uh, uh, Poole, who uh, hosted uh, Trump on his podcast earlier this year, um, had posted that uh, Ukraine is our enemy in response to an allegation that Ukrainian man was involved in the 2022 undersea explorations that damaged the Norm Nord Stream gas pipeline between Russia and Germany. Ukraine is the enemy. Don't you remember a time where everyone wanted to punch a Nazi? Ukraine is literally filled with Nazis all before the, the invasion, and the whole thing got super duper political. There's all kinds of articles saying Ukraine has the Nazi problem. They still have Nazi in, in, insignia all over them. They're literal goddamn Nazis. They're the bad guy. Seriously, Russia just wanted the, 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 the killing of, of Russians to stop. And Ukraine was like, no, we're not going to stop killing you guys. And I mean, the, the official story is Ukraine blew up Nord Stream. But I think we all know it was Joe Biden. Sir, sir. Why are you wiling out? Ruben, a self-described libertarian who was previously part of Liberal News commentary show, The Young Turks, and I can't even believe that he was he, he was on The Young Turks. It was wild to me. Has also been a vocal critic of Ukraine, arguing they can't win the war against Russia. Everybody knew that. If you don't know that, something is wrong with you. They cannot win. They can't win. No wonder weapon is going to save them. In fact, you have their Patriot missiles, which was a wonder weapon. It was going to solve the problems. Is now shooting down their F-16s, which was also a wonder weapon that was going to turn the tide. The Challenger tanks, the Abram tanks, everything. The attack guns, everything was a wonder weapon. It was going to solve the problem. Nothing is working. The only thing that's happening is Russia is getting bigger, faster, better, stronger. Like, a lot of people, they don't understand, like, seeing events in the past and how that connects to now. And forecasting where that's going in the future. If you can't draw that line to estimate what's going to happen, to see that Russia is obviously going to win, and at this rate, it's going to be a military victory. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyways, I guess wrapping up this, all, all, all the, all the influencers, uh, Benny Johnson, Tim Pool, Dave Rubin, so on, so forth. They wrote, "I'm so shocked. I didn't know any of this. We were duped, and we we're the victims too, right?" Uh, same for Taylor Hansen. Yeah, so those guys obviously didn't didn't do anything wrong. I don't even I don't even know if Lauren Chen really did a whole lot wrong. She took investment from from a company, ten million dollars. Like, is ten million dollars going to sway the election? How much? How many? How, how much in Zucker bucks went out to sway an election? Half a billion dollars, and here we are talking about ten million dollars. So I don't know. Maybe I'm just a Putin puppet. A severely underpaid, a non-paid Putin puppet. I don't know. But this, to me, seems like it's being blown way out of proportion for the purpose of like drumming up some kind of election thing. Being like, oh, Trump won. That's because of Putin. When Putin has said, I, I want Kamala to win, probably because she, I can walk all over her face. And drag my nuts across them as I do it. So, anyways, that's it for this story. This video is kind of long. Griffin had a lot of input in it. Uh, I don't know. Hopefully, you enjoyed it. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna attempt to do a live stream together. Yeah. And he'll have he'll he'll have things to say. So, anyways, thank you for watching this video. I love you all, and uh, we. We'll see you again soon. Peace. Peace.